What is up book nerds? I'm Rachel Bateman and today I'm going to be reading you my bad reviews. Really, this video is about how to deal with negative reviews when you get them, but I figure there's no better way to do that than to show some examples using my own books and reviews they have gotten. I would rather do that and I feel more comfortable doing that than using someone else's books and reviews. So I have picked a few from my books to illustrate some examples and how to deal with bad reviews. I'm going to try to make this a quick video. If you can't tell, I am losing my voice. So we're going to do this quickly and we'll start with my first tip, don't read reviews. If you just don't read them, it is a non-issue. There is an argument that authors should read their reviews because then they see what things are being brought up over and over again so they can improve in the future. I don't really go for that though because every project and every book is so very, very different that knowing what I did wrong in one book won't necessarily help me in future books. On top of that, we have things like critique partners and beta readers and editors who help us improve and who help us make each book stronger. The opinions of random readers, while they are valid, don't actually help us make our books stronger. If you feel like you really do need to read reviews or if you want to be able to share some positive reviews, have a friend read them for you, have your agent read them, have someone who vets them and passes on reviews that are positive and ones that you're going to want to read and share. Tip number two to dealing with bad reviews is to just laugh it off. I know that seems really hard when someone is harshly critiquing something that is so personal and so important to you, but sometimes just laughing it off helps you move along and helps you keep going. I'm gonna use a one-star review from someone else's summer from Amazon. It is very, very long, so I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm going to give you the gist. It starts with saying, these are teenage characters and they act way too adult. We should not have these teenage characters that are basically mini adults. They are 17 and 18 years old, not adults and then continues to say, the scene where Anna gets a tattoo is really unfortunate. Split second decision on what will be permanently inked into her body. Split second decision, oh, totally too adult. Deciding to have sex with Cameron was also a major decision done in grief. Not one likely to have a happy ending. Again, it's totally a super too adult decision because teenagers never ever make quick decisions while they are grieving. It keeps going on with example after example after example of these characters making very, very impulsive teenage decisions and then wraps up again saying the characters are too adult. Really, there's only one way to look at that and that is to laugh at it. This person absolutely has a valid right to that opinion, but I find it very funny that the characters are too adult but then get deemed over and over again for making childlike decisions. The only thing to do there is just laugh it off and move along. My third tip for dealing with bad reviews is to recognize that not every book is for every reader. Get online, look at your favorite books. They will have one star reviews. They will have people that trash it. Get online, look at your least favorite book, the one that you didn't finish because you just couldn't force yourself through it or it made you so frustrated that you had to put it down. And there will be people who gush about it and give it five star reviews and love it. Every book is not for every reader. And the sooner you recognize that, the easier it'll be to deal with reviews when you realize that there's nothing wrong with your book, it's just not the right book for that reader and reviewer. So I pulled a review for 99 Days of Lady McGuire. This is actually a three star review, which isn't really a bad review, but it illustrates what I'm talking about really well. This is from Tiana Smith, who is another author whose books I adore. We get along just fine. She read my book and had this to say. This book is difficult for me to review because it is so very different from what I normally read. While I typically read a lot of light fluffy YA, this book still captured my interest with its beautiful writing. I'm gonna skip, skip, skip to the end. While those types of books aren't my usual cup of tea, for what it is, this novel did it beautifully. If, however, you are a fan of these types of books, then this one will have the beautiful storyline and pacing to pull you along effortlessly. She's very open about the fact that, hey, this book is just not my cup of tea. It's not my kind of book. And that is okay. That is the case for every book and every reader. We all have our preferences and things we like and things we don't like. The faster you recognize that your book isn't for everyone, the easier it is to let negative or mediocre reviews just roll off your back. A reviewer who doesn't like your book is not your ideal reader. That's not who you're writing for. You're writing for yourself and you're writing for those readers who love what you have to say and love your characters and your stories. Those readers who gush about your books and write quotes from your books on their walls and send you wonderful messages 
Those are who you are writing for, not the readers who just don't like your kind of book. My fourth tip for dealing with negative reviews is to remember your intent in writing the book. Once your book is out in the world, your intent stops and how a reader interprets your book, that's what's important to them. And that's fine. They will review the book based on their own interpretation. But when it comes to you dealing with these reviews, remember the intent with which you wrote it. I'm going to read the conclusion paragraph for my Kirkus review for Someone Else's Summer, and it says, Plenty of romantic moments will make starry-eyed readers swoon, but what could have been an important story about confronting raw grief after a sibling's death ultimately falls short. This sentiment is echoed in one of my two-star Amazon reviews that is titled, A Romance in the disguise of a story about grief. Now, when my agent and my editor sent me that Kirkus review that came with like a preamble in the email saying, you know, Kirkus tends to be really hard. We really just need to try to pull those, those positive quotes and highlight those. And I understand why they did that. They were trying to soften the blow of a very mixed review that leaned toward negative and trying to make it easier for me to digest the negative things the Kirkus reviewer said. The thing is though, Someone Else's Summer was never a book about grief. It missed the mark as a big, important book about grief, and this Amazon reviewer feels like it is a romance disguised as a book about grief, but that was never my intent. I never ever set out to write a book about grief. What I set out to write and what I wrote was a book about these characters living their lives and having their adventures and they happen to be grieving. And there is a big difference there. If I wrote a book about grief and reviewers are saying, hey, you totally missed the mark on this being a book about grief, that would be really hard because I didn't achieve what I set out to do. But I wrote a summer romance involving characters who are grieving. I succeeded in writing a romance, a fun summer adventure that happened to have a heavier undertone with characters who had suffered a loss. Keeping that perspective made the Kirkus review no big deal. I loved that they talked about the romantic moments that'll make romance readers swoon because that's what I wanted to do. It makes this review that says, I disguised my book of grief in a romance totally fine because what I did was write a romance and yay for it being a romance. So remember that intent in writing your book. Remember that so you don't get caught up when people's interpretation of what they read isn't in line with what you wanted to write. And my voice is actually starting to give out now, so I'm going to wrap this up with tip number five for dealing with bad reviews. Don't read reviews, people. Just don't. Write your books, enjoy writing your books, interact with your fans, just don't focus on the reviews. If a bad review is going to put you into a funk so you're not able to continue working and writing, it does nobody any good. Reviews are not for us as authors, they are for other readers to help them know what kind of books they want to read. There is no sense in reading reviews and no sense, especially in reading bad reviews, if that's going to slow down your writing and put you in a funk. Just don't do it. Enjoy the process, enjoy your work, enjoy publishing. There's no need for you to read your reviews. All right, y'all, that was a super quick video. I am going to go eat like 30 cough drops and drink some tea now. Thank you for watching. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Go ahead and subscribe for my future videos. I am Rachel Bateman and I will see you next Friday.